Hi guys, my name is Trinity, and if you are here, you must be here to talk about books because that's why I'm here. Well, today I'm here to do the book acquiring tag. I saw this video on Andrew's YouTube and decided I needed to do it too. <laughs> I will link his video down below. So let's go ahead and just get started with the questions. Question one. Do you plan your book purchases ahead or impulse buy? Yes. <laughs> so I do some pre-ordering, but it's very, very rare. And it is only for authors I have read before. And usually that will be Anthony Ryan's latest book or another author that I'm very fond of, but sometimes I do pre-order. It's rare. It's very rare. I also purposefully purchase series. So if I've read the first book, I will buy the rest of the series. Those are the ones that I plan and those are the only ones that I plan. The rest of them are impulse buys. Question number two. How do you decide what books to buy? I am a sucker for a pretty cover. I really am. But there are those buzzwords that you always have when you're looking for something that you want to read. I also have like anti buzzwords. <laughs> and oh, there are some times when I will pick up a book and that anti buzzword will jump at me and I'm like, oh, nope, nope, mm mm, mm mm. No journeying. We're not journeying. I don't, I don't want to go on a journey. <laughs> I want to go on adventure, but not necessarily a journey. <laughs> journey means we're going to do a, lo a lot of stopping. And I don't like that. <laughs> but for ones that I do pick up, I always, almost always <laughs> read the synopsis. And I kind of decide on my own. I'm very different in like the fantasy realm <laughs> because there's a lot that's popular that I don't like. There's a lot that's unpopular that I do like. And so I generally have to trust my instincts on that. Number three, what is your philosophy on where you shop? Online versus in-person versus large versus small, physical, digital, audio, new, used, etc. Okay, so I don't know how this started other than I wanted to acquire a library. I feel like that's every book lover's dream. Maybe not so much anymore, but they have their libraries on their Kindles and stuff like that. But that was always my dream to have a library. And as you guys know, I do, we're sitting in it. And so I accumulated books. I was a book hoarder. And I had so many books that when it came to moving, oh, it was a pain to move them all. And we finally got in the library, got set up. And then I realized I didn't have enough shelf space and had to kind of go through everything and clear it all out. So I took the books that I didn't want to the buy sell trade. I ended up with a lot of trade credit. And from that day on, <laughs> I have done my best to buy from the buy sell trade. And everything that comes in eventually goes out unless I absolutely love it. And you guys have seen my library, how often it changes, what comes in, what goes out, what stays. And there's just my, my shelves are revolving doors. Now I do have a lot that I have kept and I do want to point out that I can't read eBooks. I have ADHD and dyslexia. And so having a screen in my hand, one, I'm too distracted. I am way too distracted by whatever notification is going off. And 
whatever is around me and I get massive, massive headaches from reading eBooks. So I tend to do physical and audio and I tend to immersive read. So what I do is I will buy the physical book and then I will get the audio from the library. And I do have to say it's become a little bit of a crux for me because my life has been a little insane lately that I won't pick up a fully physical book. <laughs> I need to stop. I need to stop with the physical and audio and just pick up a physical book. But it has been really hard when my brain's just not cooperating. Oh, so to answer the other part of that question is 90% of the books that I acquire are used. Now that 10% often funds <laughs> my trade-in credit. But yeah, yeah. Number four, what about little free libraries? What do you think about them? Have you used one? Why or why not? There's actually one right across the street from my house. If you guys watched my past vlogs, I'm sure you've seen it because my son likes to venture over there. There's one at the park that we frequent. I don't like them. I honestly don't like them and I'll tell you why. So I was really excited about having one in our neighborhood, really great. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go through my books, find a couple books that I can put in there. And hopefully later they will be swapped out with great books that I can pick up. No, 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 that is not the case. I go to take my Brandon Sanderson that I'm not going to read again over there and all that is there is children's books when I go back. Yeah, you brought 12 children's books, but you took the Sanderson and I know you did. <laughs> so, and I'm, I've never taken any Sanderson over there. That was just an example, but uh, no, I don't like them. I don't think they're well utilized and I think people are stingy. I think they go and get what books that they want and throw crap in it. So if it, worked on an honor system and people traded like for like, it would be different. But here, nope, they don't. <laughs> they they just don't. <laughs> Number five, how do you feel after acquiring a book? Do you share like in a book haul or a diary? <laughs> I'm a booktuber. <laughs> yeah, I share it. So often you guys will See, I have book hauls because I frequent the buy sell trade. However, there are people that get spoilers for what's coming and see them early. And that would be my discord people. They usually see them when I get them. <laughs> you guys have to wait, but they see them when I get them. And I'm always excited for a new book. I, I'm all, I don't even care like half the time <laughs> where it comes from. <laughs> I'm just excited to get a new book. Six, how do you feel looking at your books that haven't been read? Does it matter if it's currently a lot or a little amount? As I said before, 60% of the books on my shelves are books I haven't read because of the way I utilize the buy sell trade. So uh, eh, I'll say about it's getting to be about 50. So I'm keeping a lot more. <laughs> I'm loving a lot more than I have in the past. And I think that's because I have pinpointed my reading style and I try not to venture too far outside of it just because there's a lot of books that I shouldn't read because they're not, they're not, they weren't written for me. But having a lot of them on my shelves just gives me a lot to choose from. <laughs> and that, that's about all I can say about that. <laughs> number seven, how do you decide what number of unread books is the right amount? Is there a right amount? I mean, as far as Goodreads is concerned, my TBR is like 600 books. <laughs> so I'm not going to put 600 books in my house waiting to be read. But... I read about uh, 10 to 15 books a month. 
So having, you know, 60 some odd books, it does, it's not going to go that far. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with it. Number eight, do you have a TBR game or process for reading them? Uh, no, I don't. I don't like leaving things up to chance quite often. This is one part of my life I can control and I'm gonna. However, TBRs have not quite worked out for me in the past, well, this year, because my life has been a little chaotic. And so I find myself mood reading a lot more and what I gravitate towards just depends on my mood. So, I mean, a TBR game would be fun, but I have a feeling I'd play the game y'all would get excited about what I'm reading and <laughs> I wouldn't read it. <laughs> so I've avoided that for now. I do like um, Becca's Bookopoly. I really like the board. I really like the amount of leeway you have in choosing. And I do have my Pop Sugar, my 12 by 12, and my badges that I'm working on this year. So sometimes I will choose a book that either meets the badge criteria or is a book that is on the 12 by 12 or the pop sugar list that I put together. Number nine, do you have a book buying problem? Yes, I do. I do. However, however, I don't spend that much. And I will go ahead and tell you guys. So last month I spent $150 on books. I don't know what that means to everybody else, but I was comfortable with that number. <laughs> and so it, it can be excessive, but I don't really buy anything else. I don't spend a whole lot of money on clothes or makeup or anything like that. So I feel it's justified. <laughs> Part of that question was, can it be adjusted? Listen, no, it can't. <laughs> I, 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 buying books and reading books and collecting books, they're, they're all different hobbies and I do all three. So eh. <laughs> can it be fixed? I, should it be fixed? I don't think so. Tag two others to find out of their reading process. You know what? If you're watching this video, consider yourself tagged because I, I, I wasn't tagged, but I did it anyway. <laughs> and it says 11, know you're awesome just as you are. Being a book lover is amazing. Yes, that's true. That is so true. <laughs> all right, like, subscribe, do all the fun things, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.